I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. In this Inkscape tutorial, I wanna show you how to make an easy chrome or metal text effect. Even if you're just starting out with the program, I'll show you how you can make this type of effect and best of all, it's not just layers of filters. This is something you can edit on the fly. You can set it up once and make changes as much as you want, even with the colors, and it's still something you can edit. So this is editable text using just a couple of gradients that you can apply to any project that might need this type of application. So let's begin. We'll start by setting up Inkscape so it looks more familiar to you. If you're opening the program, it might look more like this. So go to File, Document Properties, and you'll get a sidebar menu that opens with options. We wanna be on the A4 template which is 210 millimeters by 297 millimeters. And I actually do want that black background with the checkerboard because it's going to make the chrome easier to see when we're working with a white to black gradient. To do that, go down here, right down here, it says background color, click that. You'll get a pop-up box, choose black, X out of it, and to jazz it up even more, click on the checkerboard background. A hidden feature not everybody knows, if you hit this delta here, there's a whole bunch of built-in palettes. I'll go to gold and you can see it just looks better against the black. But if you're working on a project and you need just blues, there's all your blues. X out of that. Let's go to some open space and we'll start with our basic text. Hit the create and edit text tool. Up in the modification area, you'll see you can change the different fonts. I have it on a Google open font called Inter. If you don't have Inter, you can get it for free at fonts.google.com. I think it's pretty sharp. Also on the license, it is open source and it's all thanks to Rasmus Anderson, a Swedish maker of software living in San Francisco. So thank you, Rasmus. This is one of my absolute favorite fonts. If you don't have Inter or don't feel like doing that for this demonstration, Inter is actually pretty close to Arial. So choose Arial Heavy and type out whatever word your creative juices wants to. Mine is in black. We need to change that, so go to Object, Fill and Stroke. This pops open the Fill and Stroke menu. On the Fill tab, I'm gonna go and bring it to white so we can see what we're doing. I'll change the font size to something that we can see better. 400, and I'm gonna type in Enter because I have it already. Style Heavy. Let's see what we have. Run. <laughs> At this point, we don't wanna have a stroke on the text. Click over to the Stroke tab, and if you had something like this, for example, just X out of it. We'll come back to the stroke later. It helps with the effect, but we don't want it for now. Now, this easy metal chrome effect is done by doing a gradient. The method I'm gonna do is gonna be with black and white, and basically the shading we set up, you can use on every color of the spectrum. I've got the text selected. I'm on the Fill tab. I'll hit Linear Gradient. You'll see down here, these are the two gradients of the one I made previously, but let's start from scratch. So I'm on this top one here. I wanna hit the pencil and that will give me the gradient bar. Grab the square node and bring it to the top, then choose the circle. If you hold control, when you get to perfectly vertical, it'll lock in that axis. Just so you can see how the gradient works, I'm gonna click on the square and change it to red. We're going from full opacity and the gradient takes it to full transparency. If you click on the circle at the bottom, you'll see on the transparency slider, it's fading into nothing. We need to take this slider and bring it to full opacity. And you'll notice the circle is set to black. So if I drag the bottom node, it's gonna take the black with it and fade it into the starting color. The actual metal effect is done by adding different stops to the gradient. We're gonna go from black to white, black to white. I know that sounds easy, but it will help if you just visualize it that way. Choose the top node, change that to black, go somewhere on the bar, double click, and you'll get another node. Change that one to white, and make sure you're on full opacity. Right next to it, make another node, and we're going back to black. Then at the bottom, choose that, go to white. Here's your first style decision. If you're typing one specific word and you wanna make sure the break point in between the light and the dark hits a certain way, because you have two nodes very close to each other, if you wanna move this and not have it separate like that, hold shift and grab both and then use the arrow keys and you can move them in unison. Let's add one more node somewhere towards the middle and make it full white. 
Did you see how that brightened it up a little bit? You can play with where that goes and it will kind of set the mood of how your finished product will look. It's also gonna help on this next step. So zoom back out and let's add a stroke. On the fill and stroke menu, click over to the stroke tab. Let's activate the stroke. And there's a basic feature on the stroke style tab that isn't always apparent to beginners. And at least while I was learning, it was a frustrating point until I realized the solution was right in front of my nose. Here's what I'm talking about. If I were to make the stroke stroke wider, let's say 10, I lose all of my interior fill. Let's say it was just a 4.0 width. It still takes away my interior. Have you ever experienced that? If you have, here's the solution. Down here under order, it's preset to this first one, which says fill stroke markers, which means the fills on the bottom and the strokes on top of it. And markers is like if you're adding arrows and things, don't worry about that. I'll change it to something huge so it's easy to see. If I change it down to here, markers stroke fill, the stroke is gonna be underneath my fill the way I want it, see? If you are trying to make a very wide fill around it, I have a tutorial on that. It's the sticker tutorial about offset, and that's a totally different area. But for this beginner tutorial, it may not be 6.0 millimeters. Just set it to something so it looks about this wide. It's like finally warm enough to take the jacket off. Changing the stroke is what really sells the effect. Go to stroke, we'll do linear gradient. On our list here, the first two were from the example at the beginning of the video. This one, 11797. And that's the one we made for the fill. Click on that once, but don't make changes to it yet. Hit the plus, that will give you the newest gradient. Click onto the newest gradient, which is specifically for the stroke. In fact, we'll change the name to stroke gradient so we don't forget. Grab the square node. If you have snapping on, it's gonna want to grab onto that original square node, so stay away from the square node. I'll hold the circle node, and doing control will lock in the vertical axis and put it almost uniform. Up here, you'll see this gradient directional. Reverse the direction of the gradient. Hit that. That is a time saver because we don't have to set up the second gradient in reverse. All we have to do is slide the nodes to make it look good. If you're following along, this is all now personal preference. I'm gonna go back to fill. Once I see both of them together, I like to do the fill one first, make slight changes, and then bring it home by changing the stroke linear gradient. I'll move in. An easy trick is to separate these two a bit because that's gonna give you a touch of blur almost. You see how that's very subtle? This, if you wanna lighten it, you can move that around. Let's click over to the stroke, back to linear gradient. I know I'm on the stroke gradient because I labeled it. And we want to get these close so it looks like a more natural light refraction. This is the double node, so you can't just pull one. So hold shift, grab both, and now you can bring it down. When they are lined up, then you can separate them. Click off of it and make your blur. I find that as long as you split up this stroke gradient so it straddles your hard line, it makes the effect a little bit better. Let's click off and see it. And just to prove you can change the words now, we'll change run to rain. Ryan. Rain. All the same edit text modifications still apply. If you want to add a wider kerning, that will still apply. If you want to do the secret kern, which is holding alt and then arrow keys, you can move them right or left. I think we'll keep rain. Let's wrap it up. Oh, actually, I want to show you the color too. If you want to change the color, you could either do gradients every single time or just save your Inkscape program so you can always come back to this. I'll do control D, which duplicates it. And this one will go to filters, color, simple blend. You get your dialog box. You want to be blend mode color. I find it looks better if you don't go 100% on the transparency, 85, 86, 87. I'm on blue live preview. And there you go, apply. Close out of that. I do want to show the sparkle thing. I don't know if you even noticed it in the very beginning, I had these sparkles. I go to the trusty Bezier pen tool. I will make a random triangle. Fill will be white, I'll shrink it down a bit. Control D, duplicate it, flip that thing, grab both, Control D. Let's turn this one horizontal. Control G, group the whole thing together. Control D, duplicate, shrink that one down, turn it, group all that, blur it out a bit, shrink it. And my last trick for the day, I'm just gonna do space bar and stamp it everywhere. So I've got the thing selected on all the lighter parts, just space bar, it'll stay. 
somewhere down there. Big one down there. All right, that'll do it. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. I appreciate the input. I like this method, it's quick, simple. And my favorite part, you can change it on the fly. Rad. All right, thanks.